Welcome, come ahead in. This is a brand new residential property uh, in Canada on the Rideau that my wife and I purchased a few months ago. This is the first time I've been out here, let alone shooting a video. And what a perfect time for me to share three stories about three of the greatest champions in sports history, the greatest of all time, in my opinion, in any sport, the great Michael Jordan, six-time NBA champion, uh, Sidney Crosby, three-time Stanley Cup champion with Pittsburgh, two gold medals, uh, world championship, junior world championship, all the kid, all Sid the kid has done is, uh, is win since he's, uh, since he's been a young player. And of course, the late, great Kobe Bryant, who um, uh, won, uh, what is it, how many championships with the Lakers? And uh, one of the best to ever do it in that sport. As you can see, this is the Rideau uh, Waterway, and it actually runs here from Canada all the way down to, the, uh, to South Florida. Now, I'm never gonna do that by boat, I'm never ever gonna do that by boat, but I think that's pretty cool that you could actually boat from Canada all the way down to South Florida where we live in the winter in, uh, in Naples, Florida. So that's, uh, this is the view from the living room, from the kitchen, the pool area. One of the nicest, most magnificent, ma magnific magnificent views on the Rito, learning to talk again. So I want to share with you what I've learned from Michael Jordan, Kobe Bryant, and Sidney Crosby in the last week by studying these amazing champions. I don't study anybody in any expertise that hasn't won at the highest level or who isn't continuing to win at the highest level. I mean, I don't get my I don't get my marriage advice from people that have had been separated and divorced three times. I don't get my fitness or health advice from a doctor who's 40 pounds overweight. And I don't get my winning and mental toughness advice from people who have never won and are not even winning or getting the result that you want. So be very particular in who you listen to, myself included. If they haven't won in the past, if they aren't a proven champion, and if they're not continuing to be at the highest level, as you know, the highest level possible presently, don't follow them, don't read their stuff, don't watch their videos, don't spend or invest any time. Winning's your sport. Whatever the niche is, whatever the area of your life you need help in, make sure you're following nothing but the highest level of champion. So with that said, I wanted to share with you, first of all, my Sidney Crosby story that I was reminded of again the other day. It goes back to a press conference a handful of years ago in Pittsburgh when the Penguins were in the Stanley Cup Finals and one of these meathead reporters in the, in the sports media was asking Sidney Crosby in the morning press conference. He was saying, you know, um, what it must be very frustrating. It must be very difficult to, you know, you can't go to a grocery store. You can't go to a supermarket. You can't go golfing. You can't go to the movies with your girlfriend. You can't go anywhere in public without being recognized and pestered for, for photos and autographs. And how difficult it must be for Sidney Crosby when you have zero privacy in Pittsburgh. And then the reporter went on and, and asked him, you know, there's so much pressure for you to deliver a Stanley Cup. Mario Lemieux is the owner of the team. Um, you're the best player in the game at the time. All of this pressure for the for you to win. The city wants it. The fan base wants it. The owner wants it. Your teammates want it. All the pressure and expectation that comes along with this. And I'll never forget Crosby because he's a pretty uh, you know pretty politically correct guy. Pretty polished guy. He doesn't usually give the media much. 
He just says what he needs to say to get on with the day. But he turned it to this reporter and he said, I want to be the best in the world at what I do. I want to be the world's best at what I do. And I'm willing to accept all the good, all the bad, and all the ugly that comes with that. I'll never forget that. I took one of those recipe cards out when I saw that clip and I wrote it down and I've shared it with my mastermind members. I've shared it in my newsletter. Um, I want to be the world's best at what I do. I want to be the best in the world at what I do. And I'm willing to accept everything, the good, the bad, the ugly, everything that comes with that. And that was the ultimate, ultimate answer to that tomato can reporter. Oh, poor, poor Sydney, and you're making a lot of money, and there's a lot of pressure and a lot of expectation. And Crosby turning around and saying, this is exactly what I want. This is exactly what I've worked my whole life for. Pressure is a fucking privilege, is what Crosby basically said to this nitwit. Pressure is a privilege. Pressure makes diamonds, and I'm exactly where I want to be, and I wouldn't trade places with any other person on, on this planet. That's who you want as captain of your team. That's who you want leading your business. That's the mentality of a cleaner and a closer and a rainmaker and a king and a champion. Pressure is a privilege. So that's my Sidney Crosby mindset, where his mindset is. When he got drafted first overall to the worst team in the NHL, the Pittsburgh Penguins, his mindset was, this is the start of my career. This is the start of a journey of a marathon to win Stanley Cups. And they were the worst team in the NHL. Number one pick goes the worst team. He goes to the worst team with that mindset that I want to eventually be the best player in the world. I want all the pressure. I want all the expectation. I want all the fame. I want all the glory. I want all of it because I want to be the best in the world. And I accept the good, the bad, and the ugly that comes with all of it. That, my friend, is the mindset of a three-time world champion Stanley Cup player, who, by the way, is an amazing guy off the ice, never an issue, a role model to young kids, just an ambassador, an ambassador for the city of Pittsburgh. So another, I have a story about Kobe Bryant that I was reading, rereading about last year, where Kobe, when he got into the NBA, he skipped college and he joined the Lakers. And for the first season, if you remember, he was an 18 year old kid. He didn't play a lot. It was the only time in his career where he came off the bench, but he learned how to work from befriending who? the greatest to ever do it, Michael Jordan. So he gradually over time befriended Michael Jordan. And he was, he was talking about um, after he'd known Jordan a couple of years and he had some years under him in the NBA and the Lakers were improving and they were potential world champions. And I remember Kobe saying in this, telling this reporter, he said, I talked to Michael Jordan about this one night and I said, no wonder you've won six champ. No wonder you won six rings. No wonder you won six rings. Because he said, after I've been in this league for a couple of years and I see how little guys work, I see how little guys train, I see how few guys make prior winning a priority. Winning championships and win winning rings is no longer a priority for most guys once they get paid. So when a guy's in his first deal or maybe his second deal, 40 million, 50 million, 100 million, whatever it is, Kobe noticed how the priority went away from being the best you could be 
and helping your team win NBA titles to now it's about the money. And he was shocked at how many players actually went from hungry drafted players to I've made it. I don't need to get better. This is the, this is the start of the end. This isn't the beginning. When a guy like Sidney Crosby got picked first overall, when Kobe got picked first, uh, when Michael Jordan got picked first, that's the start of their career. That's the beginning. That's, that's just the beginning of another two decades of hard work. And that's the mentality we always had when we drafted players for my hockey team is you want kids once they're drafted not to exhale. I don't want them to exhale and say, whew, I made it. This was my goal to play junior hockey or whew, this was my goal to play in the NBA or this was my goal to play in the NHL or the NFL. You want the young athlete who says, this is, this is the start of the hard work. This is the start of going to the next level. This is the beginning of a marathon to winning championships. And Kobe said to Jordan, he said, no wonder you win so much. You don't have any competition. And it was a bold, proud, accurate thinking statement. Nobody could outwork Jordan. Nobody worked as hard as Jordan. Nobody developed their skill like Jordan. And so there's, there was really no chance. Like, like Jordan was going to win all the time, six for six in the finals. When he did lose, he was returning from baseball or he didn't have the supporting cast. But Kobe was just shocked at the lack of work ethic, the lack of professionalism, the lack of hunger, the lack of purpose and drive for championships in the NBA. And this was 10, 15 years ago. Can you imagine now? Can you imagine now La Princess and his soon-to-be drafted son who shouldn't be playing pro ball to his, his podcaster friend coaching the team? Are you kidding me? All that Jordan cared about was winning. All Tiger Woods cared about is winning. All Montana cared about was winning. All Bird, Abdul-Jabbar, Magic, all they fucking cared about was winning rings. As many as they could. They didn't give a shit who the coach was. They didn't care about their friend. They didn't care about, you know, the type of plane they fly. They didn't care about bringing their buddies in. All they care about, the Sidney Crosbys, the Kobe's, the Dwayne, the Dwayne Barclays, all they care about is winning. That's all Tom Brady cared about was winning. He didn't care about all this other stuff that came with it. Mahomes just wants to win. He just wants to win as many Super Bowl rings as he can and more than Brady. That's what he cares about. And that's who you want. And it's not hard, as hard for these guys as you think because most guys, when the day they're drafted is not the start of their career, it's actually the beginning of a slow decline because now they've made it, they've got paid, they've taken care of their family, and most of these guys, not all of them, but most of them are like, exhale, I made it. When the true champions are like, I'm now, this is when the work really begins, I'm on a shitty team, in a shitty franchise, in a losing culture, this is going to take me 5, 10, 15, 20 years, but I'm going to go on a mission now to win as many rings as I can. That's the Kobe mentality. That's the Jordan mentality. That's the Brady mentality. That's the Muhammad Ali uh, 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 mentality. That's how they think. This is the start, not the finish. This is the start of the hard work. And... That's, that's just the mentality. Now, the last story I want to share with you, of course, the best for last, the greatest of all time in any sport, Michael Jordan. I was re-watching the documentary from 2020, the Jordan, The Last Dance documentary on Netflix. If you haven't watched it, get it and watch it. Watch it with your kids. Watch it with your teenagers. Watch it with your queen. 
That is a fucking masterclass on winning. Period. The good, the bad, the ugly of winning. What it really takes to be number one. And who better to learn that from than the Chicago Bulls and Michael Jordan, who was six for six in NBA Finals. He didn't flinch one single time. But in that documentary, my favorite story isn't, isn't the six championships. My favorite story was told by Tim Grover. Tim Grover is the author of the book Relentless. Relentless is a book you need to buy and you need to read every year. Relentless, and it's by Tim Grover. Tim Grover is Michael Jordan's personal, personal fitness trainer. When there would be before there was fitness trainers, Tim Grover was MJ's fitness trainer and coach. He was the guy that reprogrammed his body, his nutrition, all of it to become a world champion. And what's amazing is Grover was telling this story about Michael losing to the Orlando Magic in the second round of the NBA playoffs when baseball was locked out. Remember, Jordan was playing baseball for a year and a half. And when they got locked out, he was playing, he was playing double A or triple A. So he, he, had, he, went back to, he went back to basketball. But it was so late in the season going back to the Bulls, he wasn't able to adjust with his fitness and his nutrition and his health. He had a baseball body and he was trying to play basketball. And even a genius, a wizard like Tim Grover said, you don't have the fitness to compete in the playoffs. Consequently, the Bulls lost uh, to the Orlando, Orlando Magic, Shaq and the boys, in the, I believe in the second round. And after they lost to Orlando, it was interesting because um, Grover and Michael were sitting down in the empty stadium, down on the court. They had two chairs. And the Bulls had just been eliminated. And they're sitting there in the empty stadium. And Tim Grover said, you know, Michael always took a month off after every season from training, from anything to do with basketball. He just took a month break with his family. So Tim Grover, they're sitting there talking about some things. And he says, listen to Jordan. He says, give me a call. Give me a call in a few weeks. Uh, whenever you're ready to get after it again, we'll rebuild. We're going to rebuild you into a basketball athlete. But take some time and get some rest. Take a break from baseball and from basketball. And give me a call in a month. And when you need me, I'll be there. I'll be ready to go. And Jordan looks at him and he says, I'll see you tomorrow. I will see you tomorrow. Not one day off, zero days off, after losing in the second round to the Orlando Magic, he could not stomach the loss. He could not stomach coming in second place. He was sick to his stomach, losing because of fitness, because of running out of time, because of fatigue, all of that stuff that he looked at Tim Grover and said, let's get started tomorrow. And he trained that entire off season in California when he was shooting a, a TV movie at the time and training every single day. He invited some of the greatest NBA players in the league to come out and train with him to play pickup. It was his hardest summer of training coming off the loss to the Magic. And it resulted in the Bulls' greatest regular season and the start of another mini dynasty and an NBA title the next year. They slaughtered the Magic in the quarterfinals or the semifinals, I forget. But it started the very next day. No days off. After a win, sure. After a long trip to the finals and a ring, sure. But losing in the second round because you weren't ready, weren't prepared, right back to work. Right back to work. And I'll tell you one short, last short story about Tim Grover. 
after, uh, after every game, there was no days off for Jordan. He would lift weights on game days. He would, uh, he would train on, on rest days or no days off for Michael Jordan when it came to his trainer and his training. And there was only one question that Tim Grover would ever ask when he walked into the locker room after a game, whether it was on the road or whether it was at home in Chicago. He would look over at Michael after the game, after he was showered and going out to talk to the press, and he would say, five, six, or seven. Five, six, or seven. And Jordan would look back and say one of those numbers. Five, six, or seven. You know what those numbers were after playing that night before? That meant they were training the next day in the gym, in the weight room at either 5 a.m., 6 a.m. or 7 a.m. Every single day, no days off, in season. When other players were afraid to lift weights, afraid to train, afraid to work hard, five, six, or seven, see at seven. Five, six, or seven, see at five. Five, six, or seven, see you at six. Winners aren't losers. Winners aren't losers. You can download a free copy of my brand new book below at brassballsvideo.com. Five ways to unfuck your life in the next month. It's my free gift to you. Give me your email at brassballs. The link is below. Soon as you, soon as I get your email, five minutes later, I'll email you a digital copy of the book. Five ways to unfuck your life in the next month. If you like me, need to get your shit together from time to time. No better way to do it than the five secrets inside this book. It's only 22 pages. You can print it off. You can share it with your friends, your queen, whoever you want. Study it. Uh, take, take some action on some of these five things. And within 30 days, your life will be heading in the opposite direction. The link is below in the comments, brassballsvideos.com. Put in your email. I'll email you the book within five minutes. My free gift to you. I love to hear your comments below. Love to hear what you think of the book. Let me know if there's any other topics you'd like me to talk about. And uh, remember, just remember, champion success leaves clues. Jordan, Kobe, Sydney. It starts here. It starts here with brass balls, mental toughness. Brass balls, mental toughness. Those guys think differently. Those guys act differently. They behave differently. And therefore, they end up with very different results. But it all starts with brass balls, mental toughness. Kobe had it. Jordan had it. Sidney Crosby has it. All the greats in business, in personal life, in marketing, in sports, in technology, in music, in arts, whatever industry, the best have the brass balls, mental toughness. They think differently and therefore they behave differently. And that's what separates kings from bootlickers, champions from chumps, and winners from whiners. Download my book below. Two words that changed my life. Two words that can change yours. Be relentless.